Welcome into the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com for Saturday, February 18th. Tom Leach along with Jim Goodman, Keeneland's director of mutuals and simulcasting. Going to look at the late pick four at Gulfstream, but there is also a graded stake that is earlier. It's a small field, so they took it out of the pick six, but we want to start with that, Jim. It's the grade two Royal Delta at a mile of the 16th, obviously for Phillies and Mayors, named for the late great Royal Delta. And um, this was a small group, but I, I thought, uh, no real standout. Who did you land on? Yeah, I think um, I, I got it down to, to a couple of horses that I just I like. Uh, I like Curlin's approval after that last race in the Hurricane Birdie. I, uh, she came back. She lost to Eskin for money uh, at a mile in the Rampart, but she was coming off a uh, two month layoff. She ran the Raven Run here at Keeneland and, and ran pretty well, then came back and got beat by three quarters of the length. So then, then took a good step up in the Hurricane Birdie. So I want to give her a little bit of an edge over Eskin for money. The only thing that worries me a little bit is Curlin's approval has not run a mile and sixteenth. Uh, so she's she's run seven furlongs and uh, and a mile and and seems to be a mile and sixteenth should be within her capabilities out of Curlin. So uh, I'm going to give her the edge here, but I could also use um, Verse Tail, the 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 one horse coming from Aqueduct and Comely Stakes back in November, and and uh, that was a pretty good effort uh, first time against winners, and she beat. Um, a decent field there at 20-1, to 1, and now uh, Barkley Tag gave her a little time off, and she's coming back uh, with a couple months rest. Burr's tail has got a shot, and Eskin for Money is the other logical horse in here for Pletcher. You always got to throw her in, uh, and she's got mile and 16th uh, experience, and she's 3-for-5 at Gulfstream. So Eskin for Money is probably going to be the favorite, but I, I would give a slight edge to Curlin's approval of two-horse. I'm on the, uh, the same ones. I um, ended up with Curlin's approval as well. I, I think this one actually ought to really like the stretch out being by Curlin, stamina on the dam side as well, and could, I think, maybe be the controlling speed out of the two-hole. So for those reasons, I thought she could uh, turn the tables on Eskin for money. And uh, I'm like you, I, I thought that was a nice uh, win first time off a of maiden to, to go up and, and win a graded stake uh, for Verse Tail. So uh, first start out uh, in 2017, she's ready, could certainly be in the mix. But I'm going to take Curlin's approval. Uh, and key her in exactas with uh, the five and the one. Let's move to the ninth race. It starts the late pick four. There is an ungraded stake that's uh, in this, but we'll just start out, take them in order. The ninth is a maiden race going a flat mile for three-year-olds. So might find a derby prospect or freakness prospect out of this group. Who knows? Uh, I think that the nice thing, you've mentioned this before, is they card this as the first leg of the late pick four. So you can watch the early betting. And with a lot of first-time starters going a mile, I think that's... Uh, certainly something you would want to do in here. We don't have the luxury of doing that. So I'm going to take the 13 Newman as my uh, shaky win pick. Albertrani put this horse in a grade two, the Remsen, as a maiden off a strong runner-up effort in a maiden race, put him into a grade two. And Albertrani is a fairly conservative guy. So I thought that was a you know, certainly a show of confidence in this horse's talent. And with a little bit of an experience under his belt, I, I generally like horses with a little experience when they are de- you know, when it's a mile race as opposed to somebody debuting. I'd be more inclined to take the first out, maybe at six furlongs. But there are some firsters that I would have to include in here because two of each from Pletcher and Brown, uh, with the one and the three for Pletcher, the five and the six for Brown, and then Stone Mountain for uh, Rusty Arnold. I thought ran well. Um, in the first start and could improve off that effort. So I'm going to throw that one in as well. So I'm going six deep in the first leg of the pick four, and the uh, win pick is number 13, Newman. How about you? Yeah, I'm pretty much the same way. And uh, this race is a good one to watch. And you, in reality, you're going to play the pick four based on not only the few horses that have had a couple of races, but the horses that are getting the, the steam on the uh, tote board, as they say. Uh, 13, Newman would be my pick as well. I don't like the 13 hole. Uh, in any race, uh, let alone a mile race at Gulfstream. But uh, Albertrani did like this horse a lot and, and from that maiden race, or, or didn't break his maiden at Belmont, and they put him in the rims and obviously didn't, uh, he went off 17-1, to 1, so he got some support, but uh, didn't didn't run that well. Laid him off for a little while, and now he's coming back, and, and he probably is the deserving favorite off those couple of good maiden races. But take your gun, second choice uh, for Chad Brown. I really like that workout pattern. If you go back, Palm Meadows and, and uh, a bullet work back on January 31st at 48 for four furlongs, and then they gave him another good work, and then he's off of it a little bit. So take your guns. Looks like he's going to like the, the distance. Castellano takes them out for Brown. Always got to use Chad Brown in every situation. 
Uh, Todd Pletcher, the Wissom, the one is first time starter, and also Patch, who's a second time starter. Todd Pletcher is thirty three percent second time starters for maiden horses. So uh, you got to look at that. As Patch would probably be a better bet than Wissom, the first time starter. Stone Mountain for Rusty Arnold, second time out with a sixty three buyer, first time out at Gulfstream, and clearing convincing the other Chad Brown horse. So I'm going to take three five six seven thirteen when we talk about the pick four. But the thirteen would be I'm like you a shaky pick but take your guns might be a better wager on the board 10th race is a non-winners of two other than turf allowance they'll go seven and a half furlongs which is a two-turn race at Gulfstream. and uh, i didn't have a strong opinion here who did you land on i like the unbridled ocean the 11 but i don't care for the layoff um the horse was really i mean you look on the on the uh the sheet the, the racing form and it shows 12 races and the worst one is a 92 buyer that towers over everything else in here. The other horses, most of them, most of them haven't run uh, uh, in the close to mid nineties, and some of them haven't even run nineties. So, if you look at the numbers, David Jacobson's Unbridled Ocean, the eleven, is a standout. But um, I, I hadn't been out uh, only one time since August of fifteen. That was in November, and ran okay in an optional hundred thousand race, I caught a soft turf course at uh, Aqueduct. So, but Unbridled Ocean on numbers alone should be a a standout here but uh you've got some recency with some other horses luck of the kitten the two for wesley ward finished second last out to a very impressive cronin the barbarian uh won by a couple of links but luck of the kitten is two for five at distance captain gollin the three stretches out from five furlongs uh paco lopez is doing well right now at gulfstream he seems like he, he comes up with a couple of wins every every weekend that you don't expect uh, Chad Brown's horse, the six, uh, Tomba Lane, uh, uh, third time uh, after shipping over here from Ireland, has got to be considered a 92 buyer last, last out at this level at Belmont. So uh, I would, Unbridled Ocean is probably uh, the class of the field, but if we're betting win money, I might take luck of the kitten simply because of recency and good form at Gulfstream, last race out at this distance and two for five at distance lifetime. So Luck of the Kitten would be my pick, but I would go deeper in the pick four. Yeah, Luck of the Kitten is the one that I like as well, the two. But I'm going to toss uh, the 11 just because, well, the post is, is part of it, but then Jacobson's just cold at the meet and horse coming off a layoff and the, the trainer's uh, cold at the meet and never known him to be a, a big factor down in Florida this time of year anyway. So um, maybe he's just getting this one a, a start to prepare for a – start up in New York when he gets back to his home base. So I'm going to toss the uh, the 11 and stick with Luck of the Kitten. And because of that, then I'm going to go deeper here. I like the three, Captain Gogan, the four, Mountain Music Man, uh, the six, Tombalane, that's how it's pronounced, and the nine, Azar, uh, some Pletchers, some Browns mixed in there. So two, three, four, six, nine, with Luck of the Kitten being the, the key horse for me in, in exactas and uh, for, for a win perspective. 11th race is the ungraded White Pearl Stakes, seven furlongs, which is uh, one turn, obviously, on the dirt. Uh, Phillies and Mayors four and up. And I took Sophia's song here for Pletcher. Horse is training well uh, and ran a 95 buyer last August up at Saratoga. Something close to that uh, would would win this. Horse is one for one at Gulfstream. And uh, this just looks like a, you know, a, a um, the kind of Pletcher horse that, that wins a lot of times in this time of year down at Gulfstream. Um, the Stenta, the Seven, the Five, Bodacious Babe, the Two Minds and Magic, who uh, really got good last summer. But coming off a long layoff, I'm, I'm going to include her uh, in the race with uh, keying off Sophia's song. So include her in exactas. But um, Sophia's song is going to be my win pick in the White Pearl. How about you? I can make a case for her, but uh, I, I went with the Stenta, the Seven. And if you'll watch the earlier races, we did the fourth race, which is the uh, Grade Two Royal Delta, and Curlin's approval is running back in that race. Uh, Distinta ran uh, two and a half lengths behind Curlin's approval in the Hurricane Birdie, and this is a much easier field uh, in the sixty thousand dollar ungraded stakes. So if Curlin's approval, as we would expect, would win that fourth race, that makes Distinta a a better bet here, I think, off that performance because that would just I think flatter her performance in the Hurricane Birdie. So for that reason, I'm going to take Distinta. Now, uh, obviously, if, if uh, Curlin's approval doesn't win that race, I think the uh, reverse is true. I could make a case for Sophia Song, the nine, and also make a case for Bodacious Babe coming out of that same race because uh, she stumbled at the start 
and got up by the pace and, and faded. And that's always a good angle when you have trouble and you're competitive. But then Paco just didn't, um, you know, didn't persevere with her when she got beat by four lengths to Curlin's approval. So she still ran well. And uh, Juarez takes him out, and he won by three and a half last time uh, he rode this this uh, filly. So I think Bodacious Babe has a chance here. Might get overlooked in the betting a little bit. Minds and Magic for Vicky Oliver was the other one. Uh, she may go to Tampa. I'm not sure if she's, uh, she's cross-entered at Tampa as well. But um, I think uh, Distinto would be my pick here. But uh, Bodacious Babe might be my long shot. And the 12th race is uh, back on the turf. Uh, non-winners have won other than uh, one mile allowance. Who did you go for there? Well, when we get to the pick four, I had to eliminate somebody somewhere. So <laughs> I wound up, <laughs> I, my first ticket was, was too big. I didn't have a single. So um, I, I came back to this one, um, my old reliable Chad Brown with Poussant, uh, the Irish horse, uh, the three horse. Uh, first race over here was, uh, was a nice effort at Gulfstream and uh, was trained by Marco Body. Um, don't know that trainer very well, but I would imagine that Chad Brown would be a substantial upgrade. So I'm going to take the three horse and second North American start here. Um, uh, and the other horses in here that I, that I can make a case for Delta Prince is a, a just turned four year old with a lot of upside because she's only been out three times. Um, but she just broke her maiden going against some more experienced horses. So that's, that's always a tough issue. Um, number 12 reflected the star for Lescano and Mott. Uh, again, James Cassidy was a, is a good trainer and this horse was on the West coast. They brought her east, I guess, changed, um, changed owners and, uh, she's running for Mott now. So that's, that's a good angle as well. And, um, I, I think those three would cover me in a, in a big ticket. Uh, I, I didn't really like anything else much here. And, and I thought that if I got it down to two, it would be the three and the five Poussaint and Delta Prince. Yeah, I like um, Poussaint as well, and also her stable mate tricked up. Um, Southern Wild was another one uh, that I thought could uh, improve here. So I'm going to use all three of those in the in the pick four, and you could put play them in an exacta box. Maybe even add uh, might add reflected star in a four horse box just to play the race. But to the pick four, kind of in the same spot I was when we were talking about pick four tickets last week on this podcast, and I uh, singled Tommy Macho because I was going deep in other races. And I said, if you if your budget allows, you could add one more in that race and double the ticket. And it was the one you liked. And it was at Sharp Azteca um, yes, that yeah. won. And Tommy Macho ran third. So if you if you spent the extra money, I had to pick four. Uh, so I'm kind of in the same spot this week. I'm going to take the six horses in the first leg. I'm going to take all five I mentioned in the second leg. I'm going to single Sophia's song. But if your budget allows to also add Distenta, then... Uh, you could double the ticket and do that, and then take the three, nine, and seven in the last leg. So six by five by one by three, or you could be uh, by two in that uh, third leg if you uh, if your budget allows. Uh, that's what my pick four ticket's going to look like. How about yours? Okay, mine's going to be deep as as well in the first leg with a three, five, six, seven, thirteen. That's Patch, Take Your Guns, Clearing, Convincing, Stone Mountain, and Newman. Uh, four horses in the second leg. Luck of the Kitten, the two. Captain Gogan, the three, Tumbling, the six, and Unbridled Ocean, the 11, and four deep in the feature race with two, five, seven, nine, Minds and Magic, Bodacious Babe, Distinta, and Sophia Song. And then it's going to cost you 40 bucks a horse in the last race. And my original ticket was 120 I cut that down to either 40 or 80 If it's a $40 ticket, I'd single Poussaint. And if it's an $80 ticket, I'd also throw in Delta Prince. And I'm like you, I would probably spend the extra money with a shot at getting a payoff. And I believe that Pick four payoff last week was close to five hundred dollars. Yeah, so uh, worth worth the effort. Laurel's got a couple of graded stakes. Uh, Golden Gate has a small derby prep, the El Camino Real Derby that Katie Gensler and I are focusing on for our Keeneland Select video pick this week. Uh, Oakland has the Gaiacoa, and then Monday is President's Day, Jim, and there is some good racing on Monday. Yeah, Oakland has kind of taken the tact in the last couple of years to schedule their derby preps on the Mondays. So they ran one on Martin Luther King Day. Uh, and now they've got the Southwest Stakes on um, on Monday. Five hundred thousand dollar Derby prep with some points. Uh, also, the Razorback is that day a Grade Three five hundred thousand dollar race. So there's a lot of tracks that are running on Monday uh, due to the President's Day holiday, and you can come out and uh, wager with us on simulcasting at Red Mile, or you can bet on Keeneland Select. But uh, don't forget Monday. A lot of people are off that day, and it's a nice racing day, especially at Oakland. So best of luck with your wagers, and uh, have a great weekend. And we'll be back next 
week for another edition of the In The Money Podcast for KeenelandSelect.com.